Welcome to this fascinating exploration of the unique architecture of Europe. You may have noticed something interesting about the skylines of European cities. They don't feature towering skyscrapers like many other urban areas around the world. So, why is this the case? As we delve into the history and design philosophy of European architecture, we'll uncover the fascinating reasons behind this distinctive trait. From the towering cathedrals of the Middle Ages to the sleek modernist structures of the 20th century, European architecture has been shaped by a variety of factors. So sit back, relax, and get ready to discover the hidden stories behind Europe's unforgettable buildings. Have you ever looked up and seen those tall buildings reaching for the sky and wondered how they came to be? Well, sure me timbers. Let me tell you a tale about the beginnings and revolution of skyscrapers and buildings made of steel. It all started in the late 19th century in the United States with cities like Chicago and New York City being the birthplace of the first skyscrapers. They were like towering giants stretching higher and higher into the sky. But how were these colossal structures built, you ask? Well, it was the steel frame construction that allowed the buildings to be taller and stronger than before. The architects and engineers of the time were like mad scientists, experimenting with new materials and methods to make their buildings soar. And let's not forget about elevators. Without them, we'd all be climbing up and down stairs like a bunch of landlubbers. The first practical elevator was patented in 1857, and we've been going up and down ever since. But the real heroes of this story are the architects who designed these magnificent structures. They were like artists, creating beautiful works of art that also happened to be buildings. Louis Sullivan, with his famous quote, form follows function. And his ornate designs on the exterior of the buildings made sure that the buildings were not just tall, but also beautiful. And the skyscrapers of today are just as impressive as their predecessors. They reach higher and higher into the sky, with steel and other advanced building materials being used to create engineering marvels. So, there you have it, mateys, the story of how those tall buildings came to be. It's a tale of innovation, engineering, and artistry. And it's enough to make even the most landlocked of us want to set sail and reach for the sky. But where was Europe in this period? While the United States was leading the way in the development of skyscrapers, Europe was not far behind. In fact, some of the earliest steel-framed buildings were constructed in Europe. The Royal Liver Building in Liverpool, England, completed in 1911, was one of the first buildings in Europe to use a steel frame and its design was influenced by American skyscrapers. Other notable European skyscrapers include the Borentorn in Antwerp, Belgium, completed in 1931, and the Palace of Culture and Science in Warsaw, Poland, completed in 1955. These buildings stand as examples of Europe's contribution to the development of tall buildings over the years. Despite a greater emphasis on preserving historic architecture and maintaining the character of cities in recent years, there has been a trend towards building taller buildings in Europe, particularly in cities like London and Frankfurt, where there is a demand for office and residential space. So while Europe may not have been as enthusiastic about skyscrapers in the past, the continent is catching up in the race to reach the sky. But why wasn't Europe interested in building skyscrapers? During World War II, European cities were bombed to smithereens, which meant they had to rebuild everything from scratch. The priority was to provide affordable functional housing for the population, rather than building tall buildings that might have been a bit wobbly anyway. After the war, the urban planning trend was all about creating walkable neighborhoods and easy access to public transportation, rather than towering skyscrapers. I mean, who needs a tall building when you can just walk everywhere and take the metro? Plus, the war left Europe with some serious economic instability, which meant there wasn't much demand for new commercial developments or office buildings anyway. So, instead of trying to reach for the sky, European architects focused on building low-rise public housing projects, like the famous Robin Hood Gardens estate in London. This estate was made up of two large concrete blocks, rather than a high-rise tower, because let's face it, nobody wants to take the stairs up to the 30th floor. In addition, People in Europe realized that old buildings are pretty cool and shouldn't be bulldozed just because they're not shiny and new. So they started protecting them, like a medieval knight protecting his castle. 
This means that in many European cities, you won't find towering skyscrapers blocking your view of the beautiful old architecture. Paris, for example, has a height limit in the city center because they want to keep their old buildings as the stars of the show, not some flashy new upstarts stealing the limelight. London has strict height restrictions too, so you can still see landmarks like the Tower Bridge and Big Ben. But Ori, there are some cities in Europe that have decided to embrace the modern skyscraper lifestyle. Frankfurt in Germany is one of them, and they got some impressive towers that make you feel like you're in a sci-fi movie. However, they're careful not to overshadow the old buildings and make sure everything looks pretty in harmony. And even in the cities that allow skyscrapers, there are still rules to follow. They can't just build a giant glass tower in the middle of everything. They have to fit in with the existing architecture like a new student, trying to make friends on the first day of school. Another reason is the tall buildings are like giant kids. They demand a lot of attention, energy, and resources. Unfortunately, that also means they can have a negative impact on the environment. For starters, skyscrapers use a lot of energy to keep the lights on and the temperature comfortable. It's like having a giant heater or air conditioner running all the time. And we all know how expensive those can be. But it's not just about the cost. Tall buildings can also disrupt airflow patterns, leading to poor air quality in some areas. Plus, they can cause traffic congestion that makes everyone's commute a nightmare. It's like when you had that one friend who always insisted on taking up two seats on the bus. Except this time, it's a whole building doing it. That's why many European cities are choosing to focus on more sustainable low-rise development. It's like teaching your kid to share and play nice with others. It's better for everyone in the long run. And with all this imagine trying to squeeze a giraffe through a mouse hole. That's kind of what it's like to build a skyscraper in Europe's charming historic city centers. These areas are full of narrow streets, underground tunnels, and centuries-old buildings that just aren't built to handle towering structures. It's like trying to wear your favorite jeans from high school. They might look great, but they're just not meant to handle your current size and shape. Similarly, these older city centers were designed for a different era and just can't accommodate the needs of modern skyscrapers. And even if you could somehow shoehorn a skyscraper into one of these areas, you'd likely face a lot of resistance from locals who want to preserve the unique character and history of these places. It's like trying to convince your grandma to trade in her antique china for some sleek modern plates. It's just not going to happen. So while skyscrapers might be the latest and greatest in modern architecture, they just don't fit in with Europe's older city centers. Instead, these areas are focused on preserving their unique charm and character and finding ways to modernize without sacrificing their history. In conclusion, Europe's approach to urban development reflects its deep appreciation for history, culture, and sustainability. While skyscrapers may have their place in other parts of the world, European cities have chosen to prioritize the preservation of their unique identity and character, opting for low-rise, walkable neighborhoods, and sustainable development. As the world faces increasing environmental challenges, Europe's cities are leading the way in creating livable, eco-friendly communities that prioritize the well-being of their residents and the planet. And with innovative urban planning and design, these cities continue to evolve and adapt while staying true to their roots. So, the next time you visit Europe, take a stroll through its charming city centers, marvel at the centuries-old architecture, and appreciate the careful balance between old and new. Because in Europe, buildings may not always reach for the sky, but they sure do stand the test of time.